Hi, my name is Crystal and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today, we are going to find out the story behind Gail Kirkpatrick's novel, Sleepers and Ties, which was published by Non Publishing. Now, Gail Kirkpatrick lives and writes in beautiful Victoria, BC. I am so jealous, Gail. She has worked as a freelance writer, government policy analyst, and adjudicator and as a researcher profiling innovators and scientists. And here is what Sleepers and Tires is all about. Ties, ties, excuse me. Some wills ask the executor to make sure a favorite niece gets a particular necklace or that a pet be sent to live with a friend. Margaret's sister has asked her to rebuild an abandoned railway. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. Thank you, Crystal. It's a pleasure to be here again. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about your book. So, all right. Tell us, please, Gail, about Margaret. Margaret. Well, Margaret is a museum curator on the west coast of Canada and her sister dies suddenly and uh, she has left a portion of the ancestral land in her estate and so which is typical in Canada or was when uh, at the time of the writing of the book um, when a will is probated in the place where the person dies if they own property in another place in Canada um, they have to the will has to be probated twice so she travels back to Saskatchewan to hear the second reading of this will and unbeknownst to her her sister has left her a little uh, bit of money quite a bit of money and asks her to rebuild as you said an abandoned railway line so this kind this is uh, comes out of the blue for Margaret and she just thought she'd just like wrap up this estate and head home back to her job but that is not to be no, it, it certainly was not. And, you know, Gail, as a, <laughs> as a reader, I'm always, well, and a, and a fellow writer, I'm always intrigued with the way creativity comes into a novel. And I'm wondering if this was a conscious decision or if this was just the muse stepping in. I love the two sisters. So you've got Margaret who is a museum curator, as you said, and she's preserving sister, her, preserving history. And then her deceased sister, Shirley, is preserving history too, an abandoned railway. Was this a conscious decision or was this the muse coming in? I, it was the muse coming in. Mm -hmm. um, when I was researching grief and spending uh, quite a few hours asking people about uh, sharing their experience of grief, they were quite open. And um, I felt I felt I was prying into people's personal lives, but people were quite open about speaking about their experience of grieving. And um, everything from, oh, it all went smoothly, you know, to I had to compartmentalize my grief because I was the executor of an estate. And that kind of prompted the idea of, of uh, more than just a brooch or a pet to look after. And so I wanted the sisters to be quite different from one another. And one is uh, tempestuous and a bit um, wild and freer than Margaret is. And Shirley is still uh, remembering this railway line where the two girls had grown up. And she wants to leave a legacy um, for the things that didn't happen in her life, I think. And Margaret's already got quite a big life with her family and her museum and her curating. Um, and so there's a bit of a conflict in Margaret's um, life and trying to preserve her sister's legacy, but um, also trying to discover for herself why this is important. Yeah. And as I was reading, I kept thinking, are you fascinated on by railways too? Like I just went, how did railways come into this? Oh, how did railways come about? Well, my father was a railroader and oh. I did spend um, part of my childhood in a railway station. Um, and the seeds of this novel kind of 
started in many different places as you know seeds for novels come from all over the place. I had written a short story um, at UVic in my undergrad years and it was about abandoned uh, towns that had been abandoned after the railway stations closed. And that yarn never really fit into the novel. <clears throat> and then I wrote a creative nonfiction piece for Windsor Review on um, small town hockey rinks. And that never happened in the book. But then when I went to England to do my master's, um, I had to pick an academic side to as well as my idea of maybe an abandoned railway, how would that figure into a story. But I was exposed to um, re rebuilding railways in Britain more so than in Canada, although that is happening now. But people were just coming together and saying, we can got grants, we're going to raise money, we're going to put this section of railway back together again. And so I became more interested in revival of railways. Um, but yeah, there are, there are many kind of little seeds that get planted in a book. George Saunders once said that writers make a lot of big decisions, but then he said the little ideas that come about are like catching rabbits in a field. So you grab one and you grab another. But I really did want something big for Margaret to have to deal with. And because of all the, the seeds of the railway that had sort of been planted in my subconscious, that just kind of evolved into the bigger story. Of, of reviving an abandoned railway line. Because <laughs> I wonder if that railway. <laughs> um, now there's also a lot of different layers to your novel. You know, you've got grief, reconciling with the past, you know, the complicated nature of relationships. And of course we've got preserving the past. Now, when you were writing, um, did any of these layers kind of take on a life of their own? Well, I have to tell you that the final manuscript was not the original manuscript. The original manuscript was two parallel stories, one that was told in the past and one that was told in the present. But when it came to editing, when I, um, I was really lucky when I uh, was asked to submit to the Wilbur Niesel Smith International Writing Competition, I uh, was really not on brand. I was surprised. I was the only woman and the only Canadian shortlisted for that prize. Uh, but I was put in touch with a wonderful, wonderful editor. And he immediately said, I think one story or the other should go. And then it just felt right to let that parallel story go. Um, so there's probably another novel there. But yeah. I, 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 I think that, you know, in the editing process, things have to change and they have to evolve. And so I was really lucky to work with that editor and make some strategic choices about what to leave and what to let go just to create a better narrative arc. Oh, well, I really, I really enjoyed it, Gail. Totally. Thank you so it. much. Uh, it's going to put us back to put us back together on the screen. <laughs> so Gail, a huge thank Thank you for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. I so enjoyed learning a little more about the story behind Sleepers and Ties. Viewers, links down below to Gail's website and also to uh, Now and Never's website as well. So you can purchase a copy of her book and also just learn more about Gail. Gail has a great blog on her web her website so you have to check it out gail kirkpatrick thank you so much for being a guest on all about canadian books thank you crystal and thank you for promoting uh canadian writers and especially newbies oh really it's appreciate my, it it's my pleasure love it <laughs> goodbye everyone be sure to subscribe to all about canadian books and check out my other author interviews while you're there have a great day. Bye. Bye.